Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. Hello. And a very special guest today, Ryan George. So, Hello. anyone watching this channel probably knows who he is, but in case they don't, for the uninitiated, can you tell us about yourself, what you do? So, you know. yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I make, I make uh, these pitch meeting videos on the Screen Rant YouTube channel where I kind of play two characters, uh, screenwriter, studio executive, making the worst decisions with big smiles on their faces, basically. <laughs> right. I love it, Eileen. We've been binge watching your videos. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it, it. it was one of those things where I'm sure a lot of people do it where they find one and then it's just like you go down this rabbit hole of this of the pitch meeting videos, you know? Yeah, two days yeah. later, you're like, what What have I just done? Yeah. But it's incredible. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, thank you. We've got like a lot of questions, but we'll get through what we can. Cool. Um, First question is, how much coffee do you drink before you shoot a pitch meeting? <laughs> oh my god. Because <laughs> it's like you've got I, so much, you got so much energy and it's like, I imagine there's always like, because I've done, I've done similar videos to what you do now, mm -hmm. and I imagine like there's multiple takes, and so you gotta, yeah. you gotta maintain that energy. Yeah, I drink a lot of coffee, um, <laughs> just in general, like even before I started the pitch meetings, but I'll have like, I'll start the day with like three coffees. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then like just it, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, an actual problem. I think the the trick for like the the high energy is just like I start every single line with just like my base face is this, so like it's hard to go. Like, people ask me for like blooper reels sometimes, and I'm like I don't, that doesn't really happen because I'm just shooting this all alone. Like I stumble a line, I'm like Ugh. my face goes normal, and then I'm like, You're right, and then I just restart, you know. So you can try starting recording again or context. Why would I contact support in the middle of my call? Okay. <laughs> Let's bring support into this interview. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'll call you right back. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sure, okay. sounds good. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, like, ah. hopefully this is okay. This, this is gonna be a bitch, like, <laughs> stitching together the beginning of this. We do our own videos and it's like, you have these moments of where you, which you think are good outtakes and you put it together, you're like, this is just terrible. It's like, it's not fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's always more fun when there's someone else in the room. If you're just stumbling and just trying to get the takeout, then like, if anything, some frustration comes out and that's not fun to watch. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. My friend Jules created some questions because she started, she got into your videos because of me. What are some <laughs> well, major, you. what are some major differences in your life since you started working for Screen Rant? Well, I've been working for Screen Rant for like three years now. Okay. Uh, but I've been doing pitch meeting for about a year and a half. There hasn't been that much difference, just like I work a lot <laughs> all the time. Okay. I guess like I haven't really enjoyed a movie in the past year and a half. Okay. <laughs> and I feel like I've also kind of ruined movies for my girlfriend too. Oh really? Because <laughs> yeah, like anytime we leave a movie, like first of all, when we go see movies, it's because I need to make a pitch meeting. We don't really go to movies for fun anymore. And then when we leave, we're just debriefing on like what were the dumb moments in that movie so that I can do my job, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So it's, yeah, I, d I have no pleasure in my life anymore is basically it. <laughs> but no, in terms of like anything else, like I, I'm just always, I work from home all the time. So I just, I keep my head down and I work and I haven't like, I haven't really seen a difference other than like some numbers go up here and there. Mm -hmm. You actually answered a, a later question I was going to have because I wondered about that because it sort of happens when you do reviews as well. Yeah. It's like you start looking for the conversation about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it changes your way of watching films. I remember like my first year of film school and I was like oh I can never watch a movie again now I know how it works and I was like dude you have no idea you're gonna review 150 movies in a year like <laughs> you're gonna dissect everything how did pitch meeting come to be and is it just you do you have a team pitch meeting is kind of inspired by I don't know if you you guys know John Mulaney yes in uh I think the comeback kid he has this uh this bit basically where he talks about like how weird it must have been to sell the movie Back to the Future. Yes. Uh -huh. He's like, two guys had to go in and do that. And he like plays the two guys and then he plays like a studio guy. So it's kind of like based on that, basically. And then I have my own channel where I do like, I play both characters. I made like a 20 second pitch meeting style thing for Justice League when that came out. And I was already working for Screen Rant and they were kind of like, hey, if you have any ideas for new series or whatever, let me know. And I was like, I could expand this, I guess, and see if that works. And the timing just worked out that like Justice League came out and a lot of people didn't like it. And then <laughs> The Last Jedi came out like two months later and a lot of people didn't like that. So that helped a lot. This is another question from Jules. Your most recent video, Refreshing Your Notifications, which I watched, I thought was hilarious. Oh, uh, thank you. On your personal channel is very amusing. You executed such a funny and relatable message in a very unique way. What's your process when coming up with creative out-of-the-box content? 
Do you plan out time to write and come up with videos or do unique thoughts just come to you sporadically throughout the day? I think thoughts just kind of come to me sporadically and I, I write them down because like I, I'll never have time to drop everything and just make a video. So like I write it down and then sometimes I'll come back to it months later. Mm -hmm. I find like when I can't stop thinking about an idea, that's when I like, I'm like, okay, I gotta make some time to make this. How much time do you spend on your own stuff? Cause it seems like you're really busy with like the pitch meeting stuff and the screen rent stuff. So how do you find time for yourself? Yeah, by not having a social life oh. uh, at all. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, like for sure, like the grand majority of my time is screen rant stuff. But then sometimes like on a weekend or like I'll, I'll spend a late night just like shooting and editing something for my own channel uh, just whenever I can. And sometimes I'll go like three weeks or a month without uploading something on my own channel. And unfortunately, it's just the way it's got to be because yep. it's not my main job. Right. Right. No, but what you said there was key. And a lot of people don't realize that about YouTube in general. A long time ago, I think even you asked me when you before you came on the channel, yeah. which is like, how are you accumulating? Because I, I have two channels, well, three actually, mm -hmm. but like my main one has over a million subscribers. And initially starting out, people were like, how are you gaining so much momentum? I'm like, simple, don't have a social life. <laughs> like you just- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you just give that up. Yeah, that's you what know? I say is like, anything's possible when you don't sleep. Exactly. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is not a healthy way to live. Right, everybody. exactly. Don't do that. Obviously with binge watching, I, I've seen the progression of your stuff, like from, what was it 2017 to now? Yeah, I think so. Okay, and so I've noticed a lot of changes, like the pacing, the tighter editing, the characters have become more exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the subtle camera shake is gone. Like what's informed, is there anything that has informed these changes? Like, I'm just curious about that. I think it was just kind of like natural growth. I, I have noticed that too, if I've gone back to like look at old ones for, for whatever reason, that I'm like, oh, I'm not smiling at all in this one. That's so weird. <laughs> but I found like what was always funniest about the earlier pitch meetings is like them happily making bad decisions. And so I was just like, well, let's up the ante a little bit. Let's just like, they're, they're super excited about every single thing. The subtle camera shake was just like, at a certain point, I was just making like one a week or something. And then we boosted that to two a week. And that was just something that I was like, you know, I'm spending time on this and it's not necessary. So right. like, that's gonna, that's gotta go to the side <laughs> so I can actually like make these. So is, that, um, is that something you're doing in After Effects or in Premiere? It's actually um, somebody who did special effects on the movie Deadpool. They asked him to make these handheld camera effects in Premiere and then he just made them free to use. Oh, I remember oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Jarl, J-A-R-L-E is the guy's name. Mm -hmm. And so you just drag and drop and it's like, it's it's great. I got the sense of what you said, like you're pushing out more. It's like, okay, we need to like just streamline this shit as much as possible. <laughs> Cause it's like, yeah. just, you're kind of cranking it out. Is there anything you miss about like the old version of, of pitch meeting? Like when you look back at it? Not necessarily, no. In <laughs> fact, like I think like I would, Going back, I would like redo some in the, the happier way that I do them now. Yeah. It was such a learning experience and like it became like if you watch the first season of Parks and Recreation, mm -hmm. it's such a different show than like season three because it kind of like figured out what it was. Right. I'm just lucky that I got to do so many episodes of Pitch Meeting and kind of figure out what it was, you know? Right. No, I, I really appreciate the style it's become, honestly. Like, oh, it, thank it, you. Yeah, it's weird It's weird to go to the earlier episodes of like, wow, this is a lot slower paced than... The, yeah, 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 the edits are like a lot, there's a lot of breathing room. Yeah. I mean, I mean, breathing, there's like a split second, but like that split second is gone now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it makes a world of a difference. People don't even realize mm -hmm. it. Until you watch those back to back, then you're like, I, now you see the difference. Like, yeah. Because yeah. you, you, you take the time to overlap the audio like, yeah. And I, I think that's like something that goes largely unnoticed. And I, I appreciate that as someone who does, you know, similar work. Oh, thank you. Did you have a question? Yeah, no, I was just wondering about the catchphrases. Like you're wearing your oh. t-shirt of, you know, yeah. the main one, <laughs> super e easy, barely an inconvenience. Like how did those come about? The super easy one is actually in the first like 20 second Justice League pitch meeting that I did. I said it in that twice for whatever reason. I was just like describing how simple the plot was it's like they need to do something and then they just do it and then the movie's over in the longer version of the justice league pitch meeting i said it twice also and i think just the repetition that's all people were writing in the comment section so then i was like well i gotta bring it back and so i brought it back and the, he said it again <laughs> and then i knew i was stuck right no, I, I... and the other ones are just they evolve uh like yeah they're not intentional but sometimes people latch onto something and i'm like yeah, that helps me write the script because once in a while I'll just be like, 
that's tight. Okay, that's a joke. Yeah. That's super easy. Okay, that's a joke. Right. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, that's yes. a joke. <laughs> I love that one. That, that's that's the, pretty that, new. That's a new one. That's the, that's, the one. That's, the, that's the one that always cracks around. Yeah, whenever, where you're just wow, like, wow, 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 wow. Right? And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. There's yeah. just like one wow too many on there that just like pushes it into like, <laughs> this guy's an idiot. <laughs> Is there any phrase that you, like if you never have to say it again, it would be too soon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm really happy that people have latched onto the phrases. Sometimes I have a difficult time, ironically, finding where to plug the super easy thing. Yeah. Like, sometimes it'll be the last thing I do in a script. I'm like, all right, I need to put it somewhere. Right. Um, so sometimes I struggle with that one, but there's always something that's, e like, the tight is pretty easy to plug in, and uh, yeah, wow, wow, wow is fun to say. Right. <laughs> I remember watching one of your episodes, I forget which one it was, where you, like, the video was done. And then you came back into the room and you're like, for some reason I felt like I have to say this super easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was like Wonder Woman or something. Have you met anyone who's been instrumental in making the films that you've made fun of on Pitch Meeting? And if so, what was that experience like? I've had like some Twitter messages with people um, who work in various studios or are screenwriters, uh -huh. which is pretty cool. I don't wanna like name names or anything, but once in a while they'd be like, you know, like some people say super easy around like actual Hollywood studios now. <laughs> I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> or like some screenwriters that are working on like some big upcoming movies that are like, oh, I, like, I'm trying to make my script pitch meeting proof. <laughs> and I'm like, that's insane. That's crazy. Whoa. I mean, that's, yeah. that's cool that you've had an impact on the industry like that. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, hopefully I can walk into a studio one day and they'll, they'll like know who I am or they'll <laughs> fear me. They'll be like, no, don't judge us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever abandoned a pitch meeting because you didn't feel it was funny or strong enough? Yeah, that's actually happened um, several times. I find like when movies are um, very like focused on character um, or if there's like some very serious subject matter, then it's a little hard for me to, like I was gonna do Creed and Creed 2, but there was just like, what am I gonna say? Like his, he's afraid that his daughter is gonna be deaf. Like, <laughs> like I can't laugh at that. Um, and then uh, like How to Train Your Dragon was, was a really tough one. Cause it's, it was like, here's the mythology and we're sticking to it and it's about characters. And I was like, I got, you, you got me. I got nothing to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, so once in a while I'm just like, ugh, I, nope, I can't do this one. <laughs> Um, does your inner dialogue, this is again from Jules, does your inner dialogue thoughts sound similar to how your characters do in your videos? Like, do you always have multiple sides communicating, fighting, conversing in your head? Yeah, I feel like that's a very human thing, I guess, like, right brain, left brain. Uh, I don't think mine are as, like, jovial <laughs> as the pitch meetings. Yeah. I'm not, like, walking around like, oh, look at that. Like, I'm just, no, I don't, I don't have pitch meeting guys in my head all the time. <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> I would go crazy. Clearly you're a really funny guy, right? So who, like who are your comedy heroes or, like, who inspired you growing up? Well, for sure, John Mulaney. I think, like, for any aspiring comedian, I feel like he's, he's top of the list. Uh, right now. Actually, Andy Samberg with like his SNL digital shorts back in the day, uh -huh. he's he's what made me realize that you can like make sketch comedy on the internet. Mm. And that, that like blew my mind. And ever since, like I used to, when I was like 16 or 17, I would make like RG digital shorts and they were awful, but he got me into that because he, like he showed that it was possible. So yeah, those are, those are two big ones. What's the very first video you've ever made for the internet? For the internet? Um, or both, the first, the first video ever and the first video for the internet. Well, I used to do like back in the day, did, did you ever watch like those stick death animations? Yes. Yeah, so I used to make those like with Macromedia Flash. Really? <laughs> wow. I would make some of those. They, were, they weren't good, but I was like 12, 13 years old just like I didn't have a job, so I couldn't afford a camera. When I could afford a camera, I made like just like an awful zombie thing with my sister and like my cousins were in it. And my sister's character just runs away halfway through because she had to go work. <laughs> like in real life, she had to go work. So she's like, oh, I guess that character, I guess she's not coming back. All right. Yeah. <laughs> just awful. I think the, the like RG digital shorts were the first things I did. One of the first ones was making fun of like, when YouTube started, P. Diddy put out a video that was really bad and he was in a Burger King mm -hmm. and he was like, I bought a channel on YouTube. Like nobody knew what YouTube was. Mm -hmm. So then like we were making fun of him because he said he bought a channel, but like you don't buy a channel, you open a channel anyway. Right. Um, right. So just awful, just awful videos for a long, long time. Do you still have those Macromedia Flash videos? I've tried to dig them up. Um, I, I haven't been able to find, I, I would put them on like new grounds and stuff, but I don't remember what my 
username was. It's been so long. Yeah. And like stick figure death theater. Yeah, there was a lot of them. Those were so cool back in the day. Like they were awesome. Some were really good. Yeah, I, it inspired me too because like I, I I'm surprised you even said that. Like there was this program called Swish, I think. It was the it was like this lo-fi version of, of Flash. And so, yeah. because I wasn't good at that stuff, so I made like these random animation openings and stuff like that. I try to dig them up, but like they just won't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're weird like FLV files. It's cool that you did that too. That's It was such like a gateway to making videos exactly. before you had like cameras and stuff. Yeah, I had my, my Sony Vio tower because that was a thing. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> how long do the pitch meetings, well, both the pitch meetings and your personal videos, how long do they generally take to make? Because I, th I think people underestimate what goes into them because they just fly by. Oh yeah, they're a ton of work. I'd say it, for a pitch meeting, it's anywhere between like 10 to 15 to 20 hours total, mm -hmm. most of which is spent reading and writing. Okay. Like I spend hours and hours just like reading everything and watching everything there is to see on the internet about whatever movie I'm talking about. I find like all the things that are just like objectively true about the movie and then I just like try to fit them into a script. Shooting and editing is like by far the fastest part. Really? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's like 20, 15 minutes per character mm -hmm. uh, and then like a couple of hours to edit, um, like three or four hours of editing. Do you commit the script to memory or you just have it off camera somewhere? I literally have like my phone uh, on me and I just um, I look at a line and then I say it and then I look at the next line and then I say it <laughs> I get changed and look the other way and do the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not fancy <laughs> okay. And so like with the background I didn't write this question about it just popped in my head with the background I noticed it changes like there's like subtle little subtle changes to the background Sometimes yeah. you've got like audio in the background to fill it in what changes that like what informs that is it like because like sometimes you'll have something random like I think you I just watched one the other day about Jurassic Park Mm -hmm. And you had like this old CRT monitor in the background. Mm -hmm. and it's like these are things that no one is going to notice, but it's important to you. And, yeah. <laughs> and I, and <laughs> it's like, but like I notice it because I make videos, but I feel like most people don't pick up on that stuff unless in the comments, like people are, you know, calling it out. Yeah, no, people don't seem to notice it, but I'm glad that you did because uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's just like what well. They wouldn't have the modern monitor back then, so right. what, and then like the first Star Wars pitch meeting, then it's like a typewriter and stuff. Right. Um, right. And once in a while, I'll just like add stuff into the background, like a picture of myself or I saw like that. a, a yeah. trophy and stuff. Yeah. yeah, or I'll like change the chair if I don't, if I'm not feeling the chair anymore. I'll just like I'm just like doing some interior design in this fake space. <laughs> what, what is that? I need a life. What, what's the software you're using to make that? That's just Photoshop. Like it's it's just like a Frankenstein monster of a stock photo that I just like heavily modified to make it its own thing. If you had to do an actual pitch meeting with like a studio, yeah. what would you borrow from your spoof pitch, pitch meetings? Oh, that's a good question. It's funny, I, I have pitched some things and in retrospect, I'm like, I feel like I could have done a lot better now that I like have been doing pitch meetings. Oh man, that's a good question. What would I borrow? humor i would make it more entertaining even if i was like pitching comedy things i would be so like self-serious sometimes during the pitch <laughs> and just like and that's gonna the character's gonna evolve and it's like entertain the people in the room and like if they feel if they are entertained when you leave the room then i think like it'll all work out yeah you know i've yeah. actually i've heard something like that from my brother uh, from my brother he says like they're not buying your your store necessarily they're buying you yeah yeah i've heard that 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 makes sense yeah hopefully i get to pitch something again someday we'll see <laughs> you write a lot for pitch meetings are you writing any projects for yourself like any screenplays it's been a while like i was i was more focused on writing actual screenplays before i started making the pitch meeting videos but then it just took up so much of my time that i'm just like focusing more on short form stuff. But like in the past, I've written like full movies and TV thing, like nothing ever happened with them, like screenwriting competitions here and there, but nothing uh, nothing major. I'd like to get back to it sometime though. Now having analyzed so many movies, yeah. I feel like I could do a better job. Now there's so much pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't write a, I can't make a movie, I think. Like everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna go in with their notepads and be like, all right. Well, I, I think Red Letter Media made a movie right oh they did i think so and I, oh, wow. I think it was largely unwatched or unknown oh. but I, I don't think it was amazing but it's like it's one of those things that's interesting because like chris stuckman who's a reviewer i think he's also trying to make movies and i'm always curious yeah. to see how that's gonna go because these are the people who are going to be the most judged <laughs> when it finally yeah, comes to exactly fruition. that's the thing it's so much easier to to criticize and 
screenwriting is the is so difficult and I have so much respect for the people that do it. Yeah. And there are so many things that like I'm making fun of in the pitch meeting that I know it wasn't the screenwriter. It's like a studio note or it's like whatever happened. They couldn't get this location. It's movies are just these Frankenstein monsters and it's it's like it's not all the screenwriter's fault I and mean, it's not all the filmmaker's fault. It's like everyone's a little to blame. No, I agree <laughs> with you. When you go watch a movie at a movie theater, do you write notes as the movie is going or do you just experience the movie, take notes later? What snacks do you get from the concession stands? <laughs> do, do you sneak snacks in? Yeah. This is very much a Jules question. She, she would write <laughs> that. Like what is my full movie going experience? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I try not to write notes just because like, I don't want to take out my phone. But if there's something that is like not a key plot point that I feel like I'm gonna forget, then I'll like I'll sneak a little note in. I try to go without snacks at the movies, but sometimes I fail. Um, I'm a big chocolate guy, so I usually go like cho like peanut M and M's. And if I'm feeling really disgusting, I'll buy popcorn and put candy in the popcorn. Mm -hmm. oh. Have you ever done that? I, I haven't, but I saw that in Whiplash. I saw, I saw someone do that the other day and I was like just enthralled because it's so it's new nuts. to me. But I do sometimes do a mixture of sweet and salty. That's okay. the best. Yeah. So same general concept. Yeah. but like And you like, yeah, you don't I know just, what you're going to get. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's a awesome. surprise because it's dark in there and you're like, oh, that's a, a surprise explosion of salty or sweet. Exactly. Yeah, it's nice. There's a theater that we've actually uh, collaborated with called CGV Cinemas. Okay. And you need to go because they have the coolest popcorn ever. <laughs> they really do. Well, like flavored popcorn yes. and stuff? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. I like that. I'm a big, uh, I used to work in a movie theater and I would like, on my breaks, I would just get a box of popcorn and all those like popcorn salts, I would mix them all and it was disgusting, oh but it was great. Like it was great. <laughs> But do they have like sweet popcorns there? Uh, yes. 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 They, yes. Okay. Their caramel popcorn is amazing and they have a chocolate oh. one as well. CG Cinemas? CGV. 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 Yeah. All right. This place, this place that I'm recommending to you, it's near Disneyland and they have a plethora of food that you wouldn't believe. It's like, it's like a restaurant in the theater. Yeah. You can get all kinds of Korean food in there. It's, it's, that's amazing. It's yeah, awesome. I'm so into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, speaking of LA, uh, have you ever thought about moving to LA? I've thought about it my thing has always been like I, yeah i'm up in montreal and my thing has always been like i'm i i don't ever want to move there unless like people already know who i am you know what i mean i don't, I don't want to like move down and be do like the struggling uh actor cliche kind of thing like i have stuff to make things here so like if i ever reach a point where i need to and like every like my whole family's here like i don't know i would fly back and forth or maybe i'd live there for a couple of years i don't know it's beautiful down there like you guys are in la right yeah, yeah. have you been there forever I've been here my whole life. She's been here for what, eight years? Yeah. What do you do for Screen Rant besides pitch meetings or is it just pitch meetings now? I'm kind of like developing some other videos for them now. We're like working on a new series. I've always been like doing for the past couple of years, like two pitch meetings per week, plus developing some other kind of thing. Like for a while we had this thing called theory battle, mm -hmm. where it was just like a battle of theories, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not good at pitching things. Uh, <laughs> we're working on like a new thing now that I get to like inject humor into it, which is cool. Awesome. This is probably a cliche question. What advice do you have for any aspiring YouTubers? Make videos on a channel that already has 5 million subscribers. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for, for sure. That's, <laughs> that's what you want to do. <laughs> um, just keep working at it. I've been doing YouTube for like over a decade and this is like the first year that people have started watching my stuff. It's gotta be about enjoying making stuff. It can't be because you're chasing numbers. It can't be that. It's you're not gonna get numbers for years. Yeah. Right. Probably unless you do something insane and end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> do you get recognized in the street? And do when you do, if you do, do people ever ask you to say catchphrases? <laughs> I haven't been recognized that often just because like I'm usually just at home working. It's happened a couple of times and yeah, usually like the catchphrase is how they get my attention because they don't know what my name is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, super easy! And I'm like, oh, that's me. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, and I turn around. <laughs> they haven't asked me to say it, but I'll like, when they say super easy, I'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, barely in a can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that experience like? Do they, do you feel like they're kind of underwhelmed or they're just super happy and then you guys take a photo? Like, what, cause I've been recognized a bunch of times. It's like, I try my best to be that guy who's like, personable in there. Cause, yeah, exactly. You know. It hasn't happened enough for me to, to have a strategy yet. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Like I still, it's still so weird to me. And I always assume that it's just a friend of a friend mm -hmm. because that's usually what just happens. Like I had a, I have like a YouTube channel with two other friends. So anytime it's been like, hey, you're the guy, 
I'm friends with your friend. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh okay. Right. But one time it happened at like Madison Square Garden, and I was like, for sure, this is just a guy. <laughs> like this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, it feels it feels cool. Uh, I feel like I feel I'm still uncomfortable with it because I'm not used to strangers like knowing who I am or looking knowing my face or whatever. Right. Yeah. Do you um, have any tips for me? <laughs> yeah, uh, my one tip is that, I, you know, I got this from Conan O'Brien, which is you have to remember that this for them is going to be their only experience with you, most likely. Right. And so I try my best to just be as personable as possible. I'm like, if they want to take a photo, I don't ask to take a photo with them because that would be egotistical. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, that's a little presumptuous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did that one time and it, it backfired. Yeah, oh my god, it was hilarious. Yeah, because I was in because most of my audience is Indian, and so we were running around India, and this guy tracked me down at the at um, this very famous iconic Indian place, and he started talking to me. But it's like I don't know the guy, so yeah. I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing, right? Yeah, and so I go, so do you want to? Do you have a camera? I didn't ask. Do you want to take a photo? Oh, I yeah. asked, do you have a camera? And he pulls out his camera. He goes, um, yeah, here. I go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh no and I go no did you want to take a photo he's like no I'm like oh okay and it's just um, like it was a very awkward stumble and I'm like okay just assumed yeah. and so anyway yeah and I, f I feel like probably like especially with you people feel like you're just their friend you know right they're just like yeah this guy talks to me on my computer <laughs> so like <laughs> we're gonna hang out a bit <laughs> well exactly so, yeah it's pretty yeah. much that no but I mean you've, you've, you've run into all the things and I feel like if you spent time in like Especially the Sherman Oaks, LA area, people would probably recognize you a lot more now just from pitch meeting and whatnot. And I'm telling everybody about it. So. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. My main thing is to just keep that in mind. And as you get bigger, make sure that you're you have a go between, like like your girlfriend or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my job. Yeah. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually getting bad because she's also getting recognized now, and so she has to like, oh. you know, you gotta hire, you gotta get security. Like people don't realize that YouTubers aren't like millionaires, so it's like it's hard to afford security. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're like taking the subway and stuff, and <laughs> you, you never know, like a crazy person could run up. No, exactly. Yeah. You talked a lot about working from home, which is what we experience. Is like we're constantly yeah. here, and it can get like. It can get kind of depressing. Like you're just constantly mm -hmm. at home. How do you combat that? And like, how, how do you wrestle with it? Because a lot of people don't realize that that's mostly what YouTube is. It can kind of be a lonely environment, like screenwriting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or video editing, like the two like most solo endeavors. Yeah. I feel like. How do you deal with that? Like emotionally, mentally. What's your process for for combating that? This isn't gonna sound cool or anything, but I started doing like morning meditation, mm -hmm. like a ten minute thing, and I also do this thing called morning pages. I don't know if you've heard of that. I've heard, like, heard of it. I turned her yes. on to that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I do that like, my girlfriend can tell when I haven't done those two things because like, it, it's just like, plus my office is in like in the basement of our apartment. So it's like, I live with my girlfriend and we have two cats. So whenever I'm like, I'm not alone. And she's a teacher. We have this thing called CJEP in, in uh, Quebec, mm -hmm. which is like between high school and university. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, long story short, she's home a lot just doing corrections and stuff. So there's two of us here. So I'm not like going crazy all by myself. I'm, I'm doing okay. I know it seems that way because I talk to myself on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay. Thanks for asking. <laughs> you guys okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> trying to go. So, yeah. Sunshine's so, good. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I've literally been in here all day. Yeah. I have not stepped outside. I do not see the sun. I mean, my complexion is naturally pale, yeah. <laughs> but for someone living in LA, I really yeah. should have more of a tan. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I'm just inside. My last question is actually a callback to the beginning because you said nowadays when you go to the movies, like you can't really enjoy it anymore because it's work. But is there anything that you do? Like, is there a specific type of movie or thing that you like to do that is just for fun for you or for you and your girlfriend? I find like TV shows are my escapism now because I don't really do TV show pitch meetings. Mm -hmm. So if we want to like shut the brain off, we'll we'll watch like we'll watch TV or I'll play like video games a little bit from time to time. And then like whenever we can, we go travel. <laughs> That's, you did Game of Thrones. Away. Yeah, I could do a pitch meeting for a show that I've watched or that I'm like very well aware of. Like I did Big Bang Theory because I saw enough to know like what was wrong with it, I think. But yeah, Game of Thrones was, uh, oh, that know. was very therapeutic, that one, because it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And how about one good? <laughs> and and Friends, you I think you did Friends as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I did Friends. Yeah, for that one, I just like rewatched the pilot. And other than that, I had like a general knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you go and rewatch that pilot, it's so it's so uncomfortably bad. <laughs> like I highly recommend it. Like yeah. just out of curiosity, they'll like cut to the coffee shop for a joke, and then they'll leave, and you're like, "What was that about?" And they have like those awkward transitions. It's really interesting. No, I've watched I've watched Friends religiously, and season one is the one I usually skip. Because, yeah, because season one is when they were getting their bearings. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's actually really awkward to watch, like, cause they, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But season two is when they got their their voice, basically, right. and it all kind of crystallized, and you, yeah. you really saw who the characters were. So, what are your favorite shows to watch then, just in case, like, oh. in case I want to watch them too? <laughs> oh, I, well, I mean, The Office is probably my all-time favorite. British uh, or American? American. Okay. N nothing against the British one. It's also great, but it's I... very depressing. That's okay. Yeah. I bought yeah. my dad the box set because I thought it was funny, but then I gave it to him, and he was like, he watched one episode, and he said, "I can't. It's too real. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I cannot watch this show. Thank you, but no, thank you. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Like se season one of The Office is very similar to that because they were just still finding their bearings and stuff. They're just trying to like do what the British people are doing. Yeah, yeah it, was, it is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> what video games are you playing? I'll play like just like Rocket League, um, Grand Theft Auto, just like quick things that I can jump in and jump out. Mm -hmm. I don't play games for hours and hours, but like if I, just like a 10 minute thing. You guys are big gamers. There's Metal Gear in the back over there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I grew up playing video games. Now it's like, I buy them and they sit on my shelf. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, well, yeah. There's just no time. But I have exactly. I have been playing lately as just a cathartic relief to unplug from what I do. And people ask me to do live streaming with video games and I'm like, I need something that's just not YouTube. Exactly, you know? yeah, this is me time. Yeah. When I play Grand Theft Auto, like I haven't really done the story mode either, so I just kind of like play like online stuff for 10 minutes at a time and I never finished Red Dead Redemption 2. I just like, I stopped. I just stopped like... Yeah. Same. Did you, you fin yeah, yeah, no. you never finished it? No. There's just, uh, there's no time. There's there, just... Yeah, there's no time. I was actually live streaming it on my channel. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm awful at playing games. If anyone <laughs> watches me play games, it's literally to hang out and, and tell me what to do because I'm right. literally like, why is why is my horse doing this thing? How do I get away from here? And everyone's like, Achara, stop dying. How long will you be here? And I'm like, I don't know. I could be playing this game for a hundred years. So I gave up. And then, yeah. then you just give up, yeah. yeah. And Red Dead Redemption is like, Travel on a horse for half an hour, okay? And you're like, ah, oh. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. Stuff to do. Exactly. No, that's exactly it. It's like I can't play games like that. Like, for the, that, before you even get to that, though, it's the load time. Like, yeah. Also, yeah. Like, okay, you buy you bought a game, you undo the shrink wrap, and you mm. you pop it in, and it's like, okay, it has to install for two hours. Yeah. Has to update for two hours. I'm like, yeah. I just really wanted to play this. Just exactly. <laughs> Today. Updates are the worst. Anyway, uh, I really appreciate you doing this. This was the first interview for our American channel, by the yes. way. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm honored. Yeah. Thanks this, for having me. This, this is super awesome, man. And I would love to like visit and get coffee with you, you know, in that area. Yeah. If that's possible. Yeah. When I'm in LA uh, next, I mean, hopefully I'll be down there soon for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, if you guys are ever up in Montreal. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah, for sure. Come man. in the summer. Don't come in the winter. Okay. Don't. Yeah. It's a. It's. It's like beyond the wall up here in the winter. <laughs> it's, it's just John Snow is walking around yeah. over here. <laughs> but thank you so much, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, really appreciate thank it. You. And you have uh, an awesome day, dude. You too. All right. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. All right. That was really fun. Uh, thanks again to Ryan George for doing that. And thank you guys for hanging out with us. Really appreciate you hanging out. And do subscribe and check out Ryan George's uh, YouTube channel, his, his own personal YouTube channel. Like yes. he said, he's not posting on there all the time, but uh, what he does post there is very thoughtful and fun. Yes, so super fun. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other reactions, reviews, interviews, short films. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.